Hey guys, I'm Abhiram Nair. I'm an architect working in India. This year, I decided to make the switch. Can I survive a full week of doing architecture work on this? So today I'm going to be testing out all of the architecture softwares that I usually use with the M1 MacBook Air from SketchUp, Revit, Rhino, Grasshopper, Blender, and even AutoCAD. I'm just kidding, it's 2025. You guys still using AutoCAD? I had this machine since 2021. And the reason I did not upgrade is because I found that the M1 processor is really powerful to handle all of the needs I have right now. I know that the M3s or the M4s would do a much better job at handling these different architectural softwares. But if you have an M1 Air lying around, I'm not asking you to go buy a new M1. But if you have this lying around, this would do 90% of your job for you. M1 Air has this amazing design that the uh, M2s and M3s have gotten rid of. They have made it a boxed squared off shape which I don't really like because they got rid of the wedge shape. Yeah, so they got rid of this wedge shape design over here which I really liked because it helps the way your arm rests on the trackpad area and I use the trackpad a lot. Apart from the wedge shape, it's also really, really light and it has no fan that means no noise it's really quiet there's no noise in the background that's irritating me unlike the workstation or laptops that windows have i'll just show how that looks just look at the size of that thing that's like three times the size of the macbook it has a fan obviously it's more powerful but let's say i'm creating something like a parametric facade on Rhino, orbiting around Rhino workspace and I'm using Grasshopper to create this facade. I don't really need that much of power. The MacBook handles it quite well. All right, so for Revit to run on the M1 Air, you need Parallels or any other virtual machine that runs Windows on your Mac because Mac doesn't natively support Revit, that's true, but it does a really good job with Parallels. I would suggest you to get a MacBook that has at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. You need at least, you know, an 8 gig spare for your uh, Mac OS to work properly. Revit is working fine on the MacBook right now, but installing Revit was absolute trauma. It froze around 97 percentage, but even getting to that 97 percentage was a huge task. Like it crashed a lot of times and how I got past 97 percentage was basically by waiting that's all i can tell you go to task manager make sure that your cpu or memory if anything is running then it's a good sign if it's at zero the installer crashed it doesn't work you need to close it and then restart it again i've kept the macbook running overnight at 97 percentage and after seven hours it finally got installed so yeah have some patience i learned patience and i also aged three years anyway so let's fire up a sample architecture project to see how it handles this amount of detail and file size i'll just open up a plan view over here i can just zoom in and let me just go ahead and try to you know dimension a few things let's just go into the 3d view so you can see how smoothly I am panning around and the viewport is refreshing each time I'm zooming around the model. I haven't yet observed any crashing or things like that, but I would not suggest you to you know, work on a detailed construction set in this MacBook version at least. But if you're working with a bigger team and you're collaborating with them and you have to just, you know, mark up a few things, go through the model, check the updates, things like that, I think the MacBook will suffice it's really surprising to me how a machine that's four years older doesn't even get warm or you can see it's not even giving me any noise and i'm smoothly working on revit right now so yeah i'm not even using a mouse to pan and orbit around revit people would actually call me crazy in the architecture office but yeah it's just goes to show you how good of a trackpad and a machine the macbook really is so yeah that's it for the revit part in case you have any more questions on how Revit works in the MacBook, let me know in the comments. If you want a more detailed video regarding this, let me know and I'll get back to you.
For my USB-A devices, I usually use a USB-C adapter with the MacBook. This is the one from Honeywell. You can get any of these adapters from Amazon. I'll put the link to this one in the description, but you have a lot of varieties to choose from. This doesn't have a Ethernet port, but it does the work for me. SDMI, USB-C, uh, micro SD, and yeah, you have two USB-A slots as well. That's the job. Let's just fire up Rhino. All right, so I have downloaded some files of the internet to show off how Rhino works in the Mac. You can see it's quite smooth. This is nothing but 150 MB file and it's working quite fine. I also work with Ladybug uh, within Grasshopper, which I use to do all kinds of daylighting simulations, energy simulations, solar studies and all of that. So I'll just quickly show you how the workflow goes in that and how much time it takes relatively so you can see the simulations don't take that much time to run on this machine of course a stronger machine would get the simulation done quite faster but if i'm on the go and i want to do some simulations on the run then this is definitely a lifesaver overall i think rhino runs really smooth on the macbook m1 air if you're more of a rhino sketchup grasshopper kind of person then this is really a good machine to work with you don't have any limitations other than not being able to refresh your desktop i'm not complaining okay cool let's take a look at sketchup now Again, I have downloaded a couple of sample files of the internet for SketchUp as well. So these are ArcVis sample files that people use for sample rendering and stuff like that. So right here on my screen, you can see this is a model of a living room and you can see how butter smooth the camera is moving around the room. It's really, really smooth and it is really responsive. So SketchUp is giving me a 10 on 10 vibes right now. You can also use rendering plugins like Enscape or V-Ray with this, which is again natively supported in the MacBook. Let's open another file, which is again a sample file, which I've downloaded. So yeah, this is again a very detailed model. You can see it has a couple of trees from Enscape, which is surrounding the building. And again, you can see how butter smooth the camera is panning and orbiting around the building so yeah the macbook really holds up if you're working with such kind of projects which is really in small scale and you're working with residential projects let's say a villa or an apartment i think sketchup would really hold up for you in this case let's take a quick look at the rendering power of this machine i'll be using blender for this because that was easily available for me since it's a free software i've downloaded this villa project which is again used for sample rendering you can find this online you can also find detailed blender scenes on the blenders website which again you can use for your testing so this here is again an arcvis model so you can see how i'm panning around in the layout preview right now i don't have any materials turned on so it's really smooth if you're working this way and i'll just show you how it looks when i turn on the materials the rendering quality of the cycles engine is really good this looks like it came straight out of an aerial camera shot and it's in real time so you can see it's updating as you move your viewport around and i'm facing no issues with it and the macbook still hasn't turned even warm yet it's not even warm i hear no noise can you imagine working like this on your Windows laptop? I mean, it's unbelievable that this little machine can hold this much amount of power. Let's just put the rendering time to a test right now. I'll just go back to the layout viewport and yeah, I'll just set this to render and then we'll just look at the time. Okay, so it took me around 15 minutes to get this done. I mean, that's a lot for a single image, but with the M1 Air MacBook, which is a five year old machine right now. And also without my battery plugged in, I think it is a really big deal. Blender is actually fully optimized for the M series chips and considering a laptop without a fan, I mean, imagine yourself on a plane 
rendering of scene out to your client at the last moment maybe in that scenario this would help you but not on all cases all right so let's break it down the machine is really beautiful the design is amazing it has a color accurate screen still 60 hertz but i'm hoping the m5 series macbooks get the 120 hertz i hope it's great for Rhino SketchUp and even for Revit. It's a bit behind at the rendering department, but I think you can let it slide since it keeps quiet and also has an amazing battery life. In the M1 series, you can only connect your display to one external monitor, but in the latest versions, you can connect two external displays to your MacBook. You can also use your iPad as an external monitor or a secondary monitor if you have one lying around. I know that getting Revit to work on the system is a hassle going through the virtual machine, but still, if you had to do it, if that's the last case option, you know you have a way to do it. So can you use Mac for architecture? I think yes, for early stage design work. It does a really good job when your model is light and you don't have much detailing going on in your models. So it's really good for conceptual modeling, conceptual renders, Photoshop work. You can do your portfolios on this thing, you know, things like that. For an entry level MacBook Air from five years ago, I think you can be happy with that. This MacBook is powerful, sleek, and honestly, kind of inspiring to work on but if you are building a hundred sheet drawing sets maybe don't throw off your pc just yet that's it guys for this video if you like this chaotic experiment don't forget to share like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one if you're liking what you're saying don't forget to like and subscribe hit the bell icon to keep yourself notified i appreciate every single one of you